Okay, these are the problems facing Nigeria and pretty much every other country in Africa. First of all, let's talk about the systems that govern us. Mostly we have a democratic system of governance, but a capitalistic economy, if that makes sense. The problem with that is when combined, they don't really mean the same thing. Africans usually are meant to be socialist people. There are a lot of people that don't really agree with that, but this, let's just focus on the topic at hand first. Um, when you say democracy combined with capitalism, so democracy is government of the people, for the people, by the people. So everything is around the people and what the people want. But capitalism is just um, a system governed by whoever has the money makes the rules, essentially. Um, the thing is that when you describe each of them, they have very little similarities. To be honest, I don't think any government on this planet really practices pure democracy. Because if your system was actually democratic, it would be the people would kind of filter information towards the head, which is usually a president. So it would be something like um, the people in a country would be called to assembly in maybe by, for example, in Nigeria, we have the local government heads or you call them chiefs and Americans, maybe they'll call them mayors. Those will talk to the people and figure out what the people need because the government's job is to facilitate the people's needs and rights. So if they would talk to the people, figure out what they need, that information will be dispatched to the people higher than them, which is the governor. The governors will dispatch that information to the president and the president will deliberate with the Senate or some people call it Congress. That kind of system of information distribution really shows the connection and how the government would be working for the people because they'll be working to benefit the people. The thing is, when you combine them, it creates kind of a mismatch because if you say the people are meant to be taken care of or everything done should be done in concentration of the people, you wouldn't be able to prioritize capital. For example, um, capitalism is just when the system of production can be owned by individuals instead of owned by the collective. So essentially, it just means most essential institutions like hospitals, um, housing, things that can be owned, can be privatized. The thing about capitalism is no matter where it's used, there will always be exploitation and there will always be poverty in the system. So for capital to be prioritized, that means the people's needs and wants are not prioritized. So if these two systems are combined, democracy and capitalism, it will be government of the people, for the people, by the people, with capital. So money is prioritized, not people. Democracy itself, when described alone, is more similar to socialism than it is to capitalism. Now that we've explained that and we've seen the issue with our systems, let's focus on the problems that usually affect Nigeria and pretty much every other African country. Most people focus on corrupt governance. They kind of think that that's the only thing. So if that is solved, everything else will fall into line. But that's not the case at all. Nigeria faces three issues, or pretty much every country in Africa faces three issues, which are the corrupt governance, exactly as people say, the masses, because where do the people that are in the corrupt governance come from? It's from the people. And if you fix the government, and replace them with the people from the masses, they will do the exact same thing. How many people have you asked this question? Um, if you were president for a day, what would you do? And most of the answers would be, I'll steal as much as possible, or to be, I'll steal just a little bit, but I'll make sure I'll complete the project, something like that. But you'll notice the corruption is mixed in it when it comes to the masses. Okay, the third problem, and the most forgotten problem, is the external world. Some people call it the West. People seem to forget that. No matter what, Africa has resources that the external world wants, not even wants, needs. And if countries in Africa were to ever have good governance or leadership, it would lead to the resources in Africa being maintained or being used for Africans. And that would cause a lot of issues for the external world. Okay, in the next video, I'll talk about the solutions that I think could possibly solve these problems.